We are going to do all of the main derivative shortcut rules in one video, so it's the only one you'll ever have to watch and you'll be able to take any derivative at all. Okay, let's, let's start it. The derivative of a constant is zero. So for example, if you wanted to take the derivative of five, it would be zero. Simple as that, covered derivative of a constant, that's zero. The next shortcut is the power rule. That's when you have x to the n, or a variable to a constant power. Okay, and that says uh, if I take the derivative of x to the n, it's n times x to the n minus one. So for example, if I had three x to the fifth, and I wanted to take the derivative of that, I would have to bring down the n, so I multiply by n, or I multiply by the power, three times five would be 15, and then I subtract one from the power. So five minus one would be four. That would be the derivative using the power rule. After you learn the power rule, you learn the product rule. So that's when you have a product or a multiplication of two functions, I call them f and g, and that says that if you wanna take the derivative of this product, you take the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. Let me show you an example just so you can really see that. So if I had like x squared plus one times, uh, I don't know, x plus nine. Uh, let's make that x cubed plus nine. Well, that's a product of two functions. If I follow this rule, it says I take, and I'll just label this first one f and this second one g. It says I take the derivative of f, and now that you know the power rule and the constant rule, you know that the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of one is zero. So this is f prime, and then I times g, and I just copy the g function, I copy it. So I'm just following my rule, and then it's plus, this time I copy f, I copy the first one, and then I take the derivative of g. And again, now that you know the power rule and the constant rule, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, the derivative of nine is zero. There's your g prime, and there you have it. There's the derivative of the product of those two functions using the product rule. The quotient rule, that's the one everybody hates the most. That's if you have a quotient or a uh, fraction, a rational function, f and g. And it says it's g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. And the thing I always tell people to remember, it's a nice little saying, it's low d high, so derivative of high, minus high d low, derivative of low, over low squared. So. If you say that, you kind of memorize it as a nice little ring to it. Low d high minus high d low, low d high minus high d low over low squared. That's how I remember the quotient rule. Let's do an example of that one. So let's say I had x squared minus one over, I don't know, x to the fifth plus two x. And I want to take the derivative of that. Well, it says it's low. That's the bottom. D high, I gotta take the derivative of the high. So the derivative of x squared is two x, the derivative of minus one is zero, minus, and I would put these in parentheses if I were you, minus high, that's x squared minus one, d low, so the derivative of the low. x to the fifth, that derivative by the power rule will be five x to the fourth, plus 2x, the derivative of 2x is, I'm sorry, 2, right? Because if I take the derivative of 2x using the power rule, that's like 2x to the first, that would be 2 times 1 is 2, and then I subtract 1 to the power, that would be x to the 0, which is 1. Low d high minus high d low over low squared, and now, you could simplify this, you could distribute these things and maybe it combines them like terms and factor and cancel and all that, but that's not really what this video is about in particular. I'm just showing you how to take the derivative. That is the derivative of that thing using the quotient rule. The last main rule for functions is the chain rule, and that's for taking derivatives of composition of functions, so functions inside of functions. And that says I take the derivative of the outside function, f, 
and I leave the inside function alone, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Let me show you what that looks like. So for example, if I had the function x squared plus x plus one composed inside the cubed function, this would be a chain rule. And it says I take the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is x cubed. You can think you could pretend this is x cubed. What's the derivative of x cubed? Well, it's 3x squared, right? But it's not x, it's this thing. So I take the derivative of the outside, I copy the inside, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. What's the derivative of x? It's 1. What's the derivative of 1? It's 0. So this is the derivative using the chain rule. Now we're going to talk about trig derivatives. Everybody loves trig. I'm just going to say trig derbs. Um, everybody loves trig. So let's see. What's the derivative of sine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. Just remember it. The next question would be, well, what's the derivative of cosine? And everybody would guess, oh, it's sine. And you'd be right, except it's minus sine. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. And you're going to see a pattern that every co-function will have a negative. What is the derivative of tangent? And this, again, you just have to memorize it. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, great. What's the derivative of cotangent? Well, if tangent was secant, cotangent must certainly be cosecant. So there you go. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared. And remember, all the cos get a minus sign. All right, we're almost done. What's the derivative of secant? Of course, I know you know it. It's secant tangent <laughs> of all things. Sorry, you just got to memorize it. There's nothing else to do. Well, let's follow the pattern here. Tangent was secant squared, cotangent was cosecant squared. Secant was secant tangent, so cosecant derived. And remember, it's a cos, so it gets a minus. If secant is secant tangent, cosecant is cosecant cotangent. It's the same thing. These are the same thing. You really only have to memorize three and then just match them up. There are all your trig derivatives. And don't forget that the chain rule will still apply. So for example, if this was sine of 2x, okay, the derivative would be cosine of 2x, but I would need to multiply by a 2 out front by the chain rule because the derivative of 2x is 2. Okay, so just keep in mind the chain rule when you're doing trig derivatives. Moving on, um, you've got the exponential and log derivatives. So let's start with the easy one. The derivative of e to the x, that's e to the x. Ha, awesome, I know you love it. Um, well, let's be a little more general. E is just a number, right? Well. What's the derivative of a to the x? Well, if the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, well, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x. But I gotta add one thing, I have to do times ln of a. Okay, and I, I could have done that here, I could have like tacked on an ln of e, but the ln of e is one, so we never write that. Okay, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln a. Let's try log x. What's the derivative of log x? It's 1 over x. How fun. What's the derivative of log base a of x? Well, it's 1 over x. But I also have to divide by ln of a. Okay, so again, ln, ln means log base e, so I could divide by um, ln of e, but ln of e is 1, so we never write that. 
Okay, there are your basic exponential and log derivative rules. And remember that the chain rule, again, always applies here. So for example, if I had e to the 2x, then the derivative would be e to the 2x times 2 because the derivative of 2x is 2. And if I had the derivative of ln of x squared plus 1, well, whatever's on the inside goes on the bottom. So the x squared plus 1 goes on the bottom times the derivative of this thing by the chain rule. So times a 2x by the chain rule. Okay, and in general, what people like to write is that the derivative of ln of u is u prime over u. Or in other words, whatever's on the inside I put on the bottom and the derivative goes on the top. And those are all the basic differentiation rules that will get you through Calc 1. I didn't cover any of the inverse trig, um, but they're not too much more to memorize. I'll have them in another video. I hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe and tell me what you think in the comments. And have a great day.